All right, y'all. I'm sorry that I, I had to get off the phone in the store. I, I, in my head, I be thinking that I really can walk around and, you know what I'm saying, narrate my life like that. But I'm not that girl. Because when I go in the store, <laughs> when I'm in the store, honestly, one, right? I don't like people looking at me. Like, I don't like, I don't be wanting to do nothing that's going to draw more attention to me. I'm working on it, but this just not me right now. And um, so I can come on here and talk to y'all all day. Because, you know, I'm kind of talking to myself and you know what I'm saying. Like, even if I had somebody else talking with me, like, that's fine too. Or y'all talking to me, that's cool. But I can't just be walking around the stove, like, talking to myself. Well, it's not even talking to myself because I do that too. So... But yeah, no. Secondly, one of the things for me, I like to engage people in conversation when I'm in the store. I'm one of those people now. Um, I don't want to say now because usually it's hit or miss. Like I, I've always had people somehow like be attracted to me, and not in a relationship type of way, not in a sexually way. Like women, I've noticed and. I was made cognizant and aware of it, you know, not too long ago. But women have a tendency to come up to me and they literally will have a, I don't even know why I got over in this lane because y'all, this road been closed for the last couple of days with all this excess traffic and I can go a whole nother way. So that's what I'm about to do. I don't even know what I was thinking just then. All right, but yeah, back to my story. I've noticed that some women will come to me and they will have a whole conversation with me. And I don't know what it is, but I'm okay with it. I I honestly can say that I am at a point in my life where I fully appreciate it at this point. Like, it could be a total stranger. They will come up to me and they will just start talking about life. And it's kind of... It's interesting. Um, and I remember when I was in college and <laughs> I remember this one time I was waiting in line. I think it was at Chick-fil-A, if I'm not mistaken. And this girl was like standing beside me and she was just so her into her phone. And I'm one of those people, sometimes I just put my phone away and I just want to be amongst the people that I am around. And so I say, hey, how are you? And that girl say, <laughs> <laughs> she looked at me like, who the fuck are you? Excuse my language. But she was just, it was the it was the look for me, honey. I mean, and it was just as dramatic. And I was like, you okay? <laughs> and she was like, yeah. She was kind of like, yeah. And then like, she started to talk a little bit. And then I was like, oh, it was something I said. I said something to her. And, you know, just to start a conversation. And it's so interesting to me. The simple fact that like people are so connected online, but they're so disconnected in person. And I realized that that had to be like either my, I think it was like my sophomore year. Cause let me tell y'all, when I was growing up, I was so quiet, like I ain't talking to nobody. But if you knew me, you was my friend, baby. Whole conversation, whole world. Like my friends knew certain looks I would give them. Like even still to this day, certain friends of mine, like well, we could have a whole conversation with no talking whatsoever it just be like and you be like hey you know like the whole movement no hands no nothing just just facial expressions head gestures like we had like i see it and y'all know it's true y'all know y'all be the same way and so yeah i'm just looking at this come on honey run your ass on across the road excuse my language y'all it's the little boy he was trying to get across the road well you welcome to sir touche um it was this big truck coming i was trying to get this little boy to go on across the road because i can wait but anyway yeah so i remember like i've I, so having those type of conversations with my friends but i remember you know more specifically like i was saying like i started to i guess i started to kind of do that like 
to help people like hone in on reality and i guess that was kind of like a, a a small check to you know the way things were going because like as of now like a lot of people we are so interconnected online but we're so disconnected when it's face to face like you can real deal go out to eat with your friends and i i try my best not to be on my phone every now and again because you know my me and my friends we can get sucked into a little vortex and we'll be thinking we done been doing something for about 30 minutes to an hour and you done been sitting there for about three hours four hours and it's like bitch we got to go because it's getting dark outside look we came in with the light and now it's dark so you know sometimes try to be cognizant with that but um oh i'm glad the bus turned and ain't got to stop um so yeah i just i just felt that that's something that happens a lot and so a lot of times when i'm on my phone um like that it kind of bothers me and even while i was just in the one of the ladies she's a manager i've seen her you know a few times but she was just standing there in the middle of the aisle you know she wasn't blocking anything because she was right by one of those um little tables that they have in the, in the walkway so she was right beside it and she was just monitoring i guess the people who were doing the self-checkout but sometimes we don't realize how we ch how we check out as far as like our facial expressions um our mannerisms different things like that and she was just standing there and she was just just looking and kind of had a stale face and i ain't mad because i do it all the time like i'll be in the middle of doing something good like even with the kids they'll see me working hard at work and i'll be like uh, -uh i can't talk right now or i'll be like go ahead ask your question i can't look up because i'm doing x y and z but like they know at this point i don't even have to say all that like they know when i i just tell them to call my name you know say miss so they don't really say my name no more none of these children say names they just be like miss that's all they say miss but um i be telling them like make sure you have my attention and i was like because sometimes y'all have full conversations and i'm so unaware and that's because I'm so in, engaged or involved in what I'm doing. And sometimes they like to come over and have a conversation when they see I'm having a conversation with somebody else. I be in, in the middle of talking to somebody, helping them out. And you'll have four or five kids come around and start asking questions all at the same time. And I be like, y'all parents ain't never told y'all to say excuse me or a pardon or something. I was like, pardon. Y'all could tell country. Country or island. You know, I don't like excuse me was what we did you know growing up i think i started they we did learn part in too but we didn't use it that often but when i you know was in the island households my friends and stuff i think part in was picked up by me because you know i'd be thinking i'm a you know i told you i love the little razzle dazzle pardon it just sound, it it translates in so many languages so i i keep certain stuff tucked up there but yeah, she was just, like I said, going back to the lady in public, she was just so engaged in what she was doing and she was just lost in the sauce and she was just looking and she, her face was getting harder and harder. And so I was like, good morning. <laughs> and it took her a second, which that happens to me. So I totally get it. And she was like, oh, good morning. And then this other lady who was checking out, she said, good morning. And then, you know, like it was like a chain reaction and I think the lady who was checking out thought she was talking to her and, and she you know probably was delayed talking to me or whatever but i just kept going but it's you could tell even with that small moment that small like good morning everybody's in that you know central location like it's like something just the energy just kind of shift a little and so i try to not that i'm highly aware of it but i don't know i just try to bring something different like i'm about to go ahead of work and I always be on the good mornings, the ones and the twos. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah, cause I be ready. I'm, I'm so. I told y'all I was excited. I was in the store stretching. I do weird stuff sometimes, y'all. I was in the stretching my legs. I be moving back to, you know, stretching them hips, moving side to side. Cause something's there, not like something like that, but like, you know, you can tell when you have stagnant. Not everybody can, but sometimes you can tell when you have stagnant energy in your body. And for some reason, I've been pulling at this. It's something like I don't know if the I need like a facial mas fascia mas massage. I don't want you guys to think I said facial. I need one of them too. I do need a facial. I'm a, I think I'm gonna do that. 
next month. It's not going to be this month. But I need a fascia massage. And that's just like, y'all ever, because I know somebody's going to be like, what is that? You ever look at chicken? And I ain't mean that. Sorry. I did not. I did not make it face because I don't like chicken. Like, I eat chicken and I'm about to stop again. Um, You know, that backyard pimp is something else. And it's, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to get into that. But so if you ever clean chicken, you have the meat, you have the skin, and there's that thin line of somethingness. That's fascia. And sometimes if you have different um, types of meat, um, you can find it within the actual meat, not just, um, not just between the skin and the meat. So that fascia is what they call it. Is sometimes what makes you look like you're fat. Is sometimes what makes you think that you have um, arthritis or other ailments. Um, sometimes if you just get that moving, because I had a really good masseuse. Her name was. Um, what y'all be calling these white girls that y'all don't like? Karen. Yeah, her name was Karen. She was freaking amazing. And she was a white girl. And her actual name was Karen. But she was so freaking amazing. She probably weighed 102 pounds soaking wet. I wouldn't even put, you know, that past it. And I, I don't think I even really, really realized, like, how small she was. But, baby, she had them hands. It's I've only met a couple people with them hands, you know, for different things but um baby she had them hands she used to i used to go to her to do the um lymph lymphatic drainage massage but baby she would have me time traveling sitting on that damn table i would be done set up there be in the middle of talking to her i said mm -hmm, hold on and i <laughs> i'd be in a whole nother dimension baby she would be done got me together I get off that table feeling like I was 15, 16 years old, baby. I mean, feeling good, feeling like I could take somebody man like, baby. I take your man because I got it like that. And he didn't even got to be like that. <laughs> All right. But um, <laughs> I remember one time she gave me a massage and I came out and sat in the car. I felt like I owe her some money. I was like, I know I owe her some money. Like, I need a whole... I, now I understand why they used to smoke the cigarettes in the um, movies after they get finished, like, you know, doing the do, because it's a different type of satisfaction. And I was just like, baby. And I've been trying to find, I lost her number, y'all. My feelings be so hurt. If y'all see Karen, um, she used to work at um, Massage, Essential Massage, and um, it's, it's not Tampa. It's the Tampa area in Florida. And before that, she worked at the Essential Massage in Lakeland, Florida. If y'all know Karen, please tell Karen I need her number. Tell Karen she ain't, she could just come to the house at this point. I pay, I pay the extra. Because Karen was changing lives and she ain't even know it. I'm real sad about that, y'all. That did just bring me down. I apologize. But anyway, let me get my life back together. But I do have a, another masseuse, Mason. Mason is good. But, you know, I'm going to come back to Mason. We're going to talk about Mason the other day because Mason is my friend. That's my good That's my good friend right there. But y'all know it's some people that just got them hands. They just got, they bless, they just touch. They bless from another blessing. Like, I had a um another masseuse that was like that in Tallahassee. It was this white boy. I don't even know his name, but he used to give me the, um what are they called? The exercise, the um, muscle, something, something therapeutic. I don't know. It was a, oh, sports medicine massage, baby. When I tell y'all, I used to be hurting getting off that man table. When I say hurting, hurting. Like you you feel like you you leaving out worse than you came in. But t two days later and for a week after that, baby, I thought I could jump on the, dirt, the roof of the house. Honey, you'll be hurting. It'll feel so, so painful. But when I tell you what I tell you, after them two days of pain, I felt like I could just jump. When I say jump, I mean from the ground to the roof. No, no uh, elevator. No stairs needed. No, um, y'all know what I'm trying to say. I forgot what the thing called. 
Louder. No louder needed. And y'all gotta excuse me. Let me tell y'all. Let me give y'all a little piece of my um my business too. I was in a couple of car accidents. Um and when you get shook up like that, uh I might post pictures one of these days because that's a blessing that I um came through any of that. But the first one, it was bad. But that second one, she was really bad because we went through a couple of trees. And so when I say blessed to be alive, y'all, blessed to be alive. And I got a, a wonderful testimony. Um, I'm not super safe no more. You know what I'm saying? I'm not religious. I am very spiritual. Um, but baby, going back to my massage, that man there, when I, oh, I was saying that because y'all see that my mind, sometimes I be sporadic. So after those car accidents, I realized one years later i realized that i had a concussion because i remember driving um to my friend's house it was like maybe two three days after the car accident i was driving to her house in the middle of the road could not remember where i was going i knew where i was at like i knew i wasn't far because it was just in my head but i i could not for the life of me i had to pull over to a gas station because i couldn't tell myself how to get to her house also couldn't tell myself how to get back home. And I was boohoo crying at the gas station calling her. And because I said, I know you're not far. Damn, I feel like I'm about to get emotional. Gotta get my life together. No, but um literally I remember calling her and telling her, I know you're not far, but I cannot, I don't know where I am. Like I could tell you where I am as far as like the street signs and what gas station I'm in I am am at, but my everything in my mind just went blank and i didn't know that that was a um concussion at the time but i had a realization that you know later after learning what concussions were and all this other stuff while i was here teaching the kids as a matter of fact we we're learning about sports and you know um people having sports accidents so i realized then that i had had a concussion after the second accident that i was in um, my friend told me she's a speech pathologist and at the time she was in her last year, I think. Um, and so she was like, what is wrong? She was like, did you hit your head in the car accident? I was like, uh, maybe, I don't know. You know, da -da -da -da. she was like, I'm sure you did. She was like, because your demeanor is changing your, you know, like she was listening out like all these things that she's noticed, but of course, you know, she can't diagnose me. I'm looking everywhere, y'all. It's it's a lot going on outside, sorry. But of course, she can't diagnose me. And so, you know, at first I was in denial. And I was like, no, you know, that's not it, blah, 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 blah. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe it is. And then I remember trying to search my brain for words that I knew. And I did not have the words to use. Like I was like, and I would get frustrated. And again, it's to a point where you start crying like it's emotionally draining when you know you know stuff and you know you are smarter than what is coming out of your mouth. And I could not articulate for the life of me what I wanted to say. And so that was very frustrating. And I think I'm going I'm to have a, a talk about that with y'all later because um, that led to a lot of different things as well. So... um if you guys see me a little scattered, I have been working very hard for a lot of, <laughs> look, a lot of years on trying to make sure that I articulate what it is that I'm trying to say. I try to be very patient with a lot of different people. Um, when I'm talking, I ask people to be patient with me as well. Um, just because I know I, <laughs> look, I know I done had some accidents in the head, you know, had a couple of incidents, but there's a lot that I know. There's a lot I want to share. There's a lot of healing that I've had to go through um, on so many levels. And I feel like I'm also here to share those things with other people. So I digress. There was somewhere I was supposed to go with that. Uh, at this point, I don't remember. So it is what it is. We're going to chop it up to I don't remember. But um, I'm about to go into the job. And so, I'm going to see y'all later. Because y'all know, this is my 100 days of showing up, baby. So dramatic. 
All right, y'all. Love y'all. Peace. <laughs>